Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Monday. I waited for all the weather models to come in so that we could take a look at what well, really is a very interesting and kind of crazy pattern going forward, depending on which model you look at. But first off, let's resolve the short range because we do have this uh, weather system coming through for Tuesday and Wednesday. It'll be a two-day rain event for much of the Northeast. A lot of areas are going to be getting some uh, decent rains out of this. And Weather models are actually taking a little longer getting the rain out of the way in the northeast for Thursday. So this is the GFS uh, view, and I'll just put up the uh, precip totals on this so we can take a look. And, you know, they are pretty substantial uh, amounts of three inches plus in some of the western Carolinas and through Tennessee, and that extends northward into parts of West Virginia. And then you see this large area of two to five inch rainfall amounts uh, from south central pennsylvania across through northeastern pennsylvania the northern parts of new jersey southeastern new york state uh, into southern new england kind of touching long island but close enough that i would suspect that you know, even long island will get into a couple of inches of rain out of this and who knows there might even be a little bit of lightning and thunder it doesn't rain straight through there will be a break as the model indicates and then after that it kind of gets a little confusing because depending on which model you look at you're going to have two widely different scenarios happening so let me explain uh, just exactly what is going on and let's set this map up correctly here and there we go okay so we have the upper air on the GFS and I want to just uh, roll away so this first storm is over with now let's move to uh, Friday, which as we are going to mark out here for you, you have the departing system here in the eastern states. Okay, so that's gone. And then we have this next trough that's digging down into the southwest. Now, the GFS, what it does is that it takes this system and it's going to dig it even further to the southwest. Now, I'm just going to switch to the European model here at this point and show you that it is different. There's the uh, European in the southwest, and you can see it has a, it's an open trough that extends from Montana down into the southwest, where the GFS has the southern part of that trough cutting off. So wh what happens as we go forward? Well, let's move to uh, 120 hours, which is Saturday morning. Uh, here's the GFS, and we'll uh, play it out for you. And in the meantime, here in the east, we're getting uh, a little colder and drying out from the rain and we should point out by the way that when we turn cold we get back down to normal or a little bit below but we're still at the end of November here and beginning of December where average highs are still in the upper 40s you have to get to the end of December when the average highs get into the upper 30s to around 40 okay so let's I'll lay that aside now okay so here's the GFS where it cuts off this thing to the southwest and just kind of has weak weather systems moving along in the northern part of the jet well the european on the other hand says no the european wants to bring out of the whole thing and this is going to be a big difference if this, if it's something like this the other difference is is up here as we have a bit of a colder flow that's coming down out of canada into the northeast not especially cold but certainly cold enough that it might have impact in areas around the great lakes and perhaps in, in interior areas of the Northeast over time with this next weather system, because what the European does, and it's done this now for three runs in a row, is that it takes that whole trough bodily eastward and basically creates a major storm early next week, centered right here in Northwestern Ohio. So some kind of low that goes up uh, into the Northern areas of the Ohio Valley and eventually translates off uh, the coast of New England. So something like this would probably mean substantial snows for the Midwest, uh, part, back through uh, Illinois and Indiana, and maybe even into northwestern Ohio, and then also per perhaps interior New England and uh, northern areas of upstate New York, which eventually then trans translate over into a, a very effective lake effect snow machine. The GFS, on the other hand, totally different. And you can see what happens. That system in the southwest just kind of gets locked away and absorbed. And you really don't have much happening at all 
out of this. There's no major storm at all because nothing really comes out. So just to show you in terms of the surface, how different these two things are, uh, we're going to switch over and I'll get a little tighter for you so you can take a look. Okay, so here's the GFS model and we'll back it up to here's our first system going out. High pressure builds in. High pressure pretty much covers the entire eastern two-thirds of the United States. You have a weak system that starts to come out of the Gulf, and then eventually it does something for the middle part of next week as a system uh, heads northeastward from there. The European, on the other hand, because of what it's doing and bringing that whole trough out, will uh, show you, I'll show you with the surface on here, and we'll back it up. And that's the GFS now, so let me just switch the model. And we'll just go backwards. Do I have the right model up? There it is. I'm sorry. So here we go. So for uh, Saturday, here comes low pressure that comes out of the Gulf states, runs up into northern Alabama, and then intensifies into a major storm in northwest Ohio. There's a, 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 a low that's beginning to redevelop uh, over northern areas of Chesapeake Bay here. So this would mean a huge soaking rain for the Northeast come Sunday, uh, late Sunday, Sunday night, and Monday for the, the uh, drought areas at least. And then maybe there'll be uh, colder, there'll be colder air up to well to the north. And then that low just redevelops in the Gulf of Maine and moves out. And before the next weather system starts to come out, because another difference occurs where the European wants to bring out another system out from the west and the GFS uh, takes longer to get there. So these are huge model differences that are going on. Uh, and, you know, ultimately, they're going to have a huge, you know, an outcome in how things happen in the longer term because uh, everything, at one, everything has impact one after the other. Here's the 10-day uh, upper air on the European model. And you can see there's a new trough here. This is the major storm for early, uh, late in the week and early next week. And you've got another trough that's coming out and uh, ridge here, ridge here, and blocking high that develops up north of Alaska. Uh, the, how this translates beyond, I don't know. Uh, the model only goes out to, to 10 days. Uh, but you still have this very, very active southern jet on the uh, European, the Pacific jet that keeps bringing in weather systems one after another. Whereas if we switch over to the GFS, it's still going to have that southern jet, but it just kind of resolves it a little differently. You have a trough here, you have it here. It's a bit of a colder look here in the eastern states because you have this uh, upper low that forms over Hudson's Bay. Now, longer term, the GFS does have a gradually colder look, but it's not as extreme as what it showed us yesterday. I'll just back up to uh, yesterday. Uh, when we looked at this, which is a very, very cold look developing across North America, this today's is is kind of like eh. I mean, it's it's colder, but it's not crazy cold. Um, and when we look at uh, the the anomalies in terms of the temperature, uh, you can see that on the um, on the old on the new GFS run that uh, it, it just kind of it is colder than normal across much of the United States, and it's just a warmer than normal in central Canada and a little bit colder on either side. It looks like on, on the whole, through all the models, that Canada is getting colder. When we look at uh, the European temperature anomalies, this is only going out to the day 10 now, so we don't know where it's going to translate after this. But the western part of Canada and the western part of the United States are cold, and we're starting to warm up ahead of the next weather system. Uh, this is around December 8th or 9th. So, look, you can see the variability here is just crazy. And we're going to have, um, we have to resolve the difference for this coming weekend. We know the first system, at least they're kind of locked on to all the same thing. But we have to first resolve whether there's going to be a major storm that's going to run up to the Great Lakes late Sunday, Sunday night into Monday. Or is it just going to be nothing? And I would caution, by the way, that the European has done this before. 
in the last two months where it's made these uh, big storms that have not happened. Uh, on the other side of this equation is the fact that the European has done this now for three runs in a row. Um, so, you know, you know we got to see whether this is real. The, the key is going to be the system in the southwest and how that ultimately gets resolved. So at the very least, uh, for the eastern part of the United States, we could have another uh, really good soaking rain to look forward to. And that'll really, if we have whatever we could get Tuesday and Wednesday into Thursday, and then add to that something for late Sunday, Sunday night into Monday, that really is going to do a lot to uh, ease the drought conditions in much of the Northeast and in the Mid-Atlantic states. So that takes care of the long range for today. Uh, we will uh, have, we have a Joe Stradamus post. I'll have a link up for that uh, right now and you can take a look at it. And in the meantime, uh, don't forget to check out all the other stuff on the website. And if you're interested, download my app and you can subscribe to my forecast for New York City, uh, Long Island, uh, New Jersey, the Hudson Valley, and uh, for uh, Eastern Pennsylvania. So uh, you can download that. The forecast is just, it's just a buck a month. You'll get an ad-free experience and I would appreciate it very much. So have a great day and uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow with more on the latest on this crazy pattern we're going into as we go into December.